So I just took this Vader battery out of the freezer, and as you can see, it's nice and chilly. 9.7 degrees Fahrenheit, negative 12 Celsius. So we've got a solar panel out there in the sun, solar charge controller right here. We've got the Victron Smart Shunt here. So uh, we'll, we should be able to see the direction of current here once we plug the uh, solar in. So let's see what happens here. Okay, two 200 watt panels. We should get uh, over 200 watts easily. It throttled itself down. You see how it was going up really high and then it throttled it down to the six amp 90 watt range. So that means that the heaters are officially on inside the battery. That is very impressive to have not only cold temperature charging protection, but also heated batteries. So you can run it in very cold temperatures and it will heat it up. Here is the uh, BMS app. Oh, and look at this, the charge is off and we've got protection. Charging protection is on. No power going to the battery. You can see that uh, it's turned off the charge. And forgive the cute baby sounds here in the background. I'm in charge of uh, the little one today while mom's out doing stuff. We've risen to 21 degrees Fahrenheit and climbing. Now it's toasty out here today, so you know, we're getting some heat from outside, but there's no way that it would be climbing this fast just from the ambient air temperature. 21. Point two. Let's go back to the smart shunt. Here we are back to the smart shunt. We're pulling 88 watts through the shunt. So something inside that battery is consuming power. In this BMS, we can see that uh, we are not charging at all. Zero watts across the board, and we've got protection enabled. Uh, we're at 22 degrees, so those heaters are doing a number. It hit 41 degrees, and now we're charging. So yeah, it's got to just go over 41 degrees, and then uh, you're good to go. And you can see here in the Victron app, we're now pushing 15.3 amps. 214 watts into that battery. Very, very cool. First time playing with a self-heating battery. Love it. Good job, Vader. How long can this Vader 100 amp hour 12 volt battery run? My full size kitchen refrigerator. We're gonna use this power station as a medium between the battery and the fridge. Uh, this serves two purposes. One, I need an inverter. So this has that uh, built-in inverter. And then two, sometimes I'm not right here when the battery dies, I'm a couple hours behind. And uh, so this power station will see the fridge through and uh, keep my stuff cold. We're also going to be running the power through the Victron Smart Shunt. That will uh, give us a measurement of capacity. Now I do need to insert here, this uh, capacity test is lower than a 0.2C rate. So usually we, the numbers get slightly skewed to the smaller side. We do need to take the results with a little bit of a grain of salt. But uh, again, we're all about doing real world tests. So this is something you would be doing in the real world. Extending the runtime of one of your power stations to run your fridge during a good down situation. So we wanna see what it's going to perform like. You can see here on the Victron Smart Shunt, everything is zeroed out. You can see the fridge is pulling just over 100 watts. Perfect timing, 11 a.m. on the dot. Let's see how long this uh, runs for. We have uh, finished the uh, full-size fridge test. Check this out, very impressive results. We did discharge a full 100 amp hour, and that is, again, less than 0.2C. So that is a very impressive result. Now, it is just past 7 in the morning. I missed when that battery cut off. By about uh, 2 hours, that uh, battery just ran my full-size fridge for about 17 hours. This inverter charger is incredibly heavy, so this next test uh, we're going to use extension cords for. Can this Vader 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery power? Follow the cord. A 120 volt mini split heat pump. This is 9000 BTUs and we're going to be running it in cooling today. Piece of cake for it, no problem. We got this running on the Vader battery. Let's run back uh, to within Bluetooth range and uh, see what kind of power this is pulling. Back in the garage here and uh, with the mini split running as well as the overhead from the inverter, you can see maybe, uh, it's a little hard to see, but anyway, 755, 757 watts right in there. And that's just uh, for the first uh, initial startup on that uh, mini split. Once it's run for a little while and uh, the uh, set point temperature gets closer to where it should be, uh, I see it ramp as low as 200 watts, even with the outdoor unit still running. So this uh, battery can easily run a 120 volt mini split heat pump. All right, one of everyone's favorite tests. Can this Vader battery power? A clothes washer and a clothes dryer. Now this dryer is a gas dryer, so it uh, just uses 120 volts. We've got a load of clothes in the dryer and a load of clothes here in the washer. 
We're going to start with the dryer here because that's the one that's usually the hardest one to get going. Once it gets going, it's good. It's just the initial surge really puts a load on these batteries. 240 volt socket is unused. Uh, you might be able to see the gas line back there, but uh, you can also see that uh, the outlet is not being used. So we've got them plugged in right here, comes down, yellow extension cord, and uh, there's the battery and uh, the 3000 watt uh, inverter, which is more than capable of starting and running this dryer. So the weak link is the battery. Three, two, one. Aha! Started it, piece of cake. Uh, we're pulling just over 300 watts. Once it gets going, it's not hard. Uh, it's just that initial surge. Did a great job with that. Let's run a batch of wash at the same time. We're at a state of charge of 98%. This is a pretty soiled batch of wash, so this washer's gonna run for 80 minutes. This dryer's gonna run for approximately an hour. So let's uh, let's see if this battery can do a full batch of wash. All right, we are on the spin cycle. We're consuming uh, just under 500 watts. The wash is done, and as you can see, we're down to 55% state of charge. So this Vader battery can easily handle a load of wash. Can this meter full volt 100 amp hour battery run a full size household vacuum cleaner? It's pulling. It uh, was pulling like 1600 watts over 100 amps of uh, discharge. Battery cut it off. I love to see batteries that uh, do that, uh, even though it's not able to run that. Uh, it's good to see that uh, they have the surge power and it automatically resets. It's really good to uh, be able to see that that is able to provide a really good surge start. We saw it with the dryer, we saw it start the vacuum here, but uh, after a period of time of it being uh, overcurrent, drawing overcurrent on it, it shuts itself down. And that's a really good safety feature to see. And I'm also very happy to see that it has an automatic reset. Can this Vader 12 volt 100 amp hour battery power an electric hot plate? I think it will power it for a couple of seconds and then turn off. This will be a great uh, follow-up test from that vacuum to uh, see uh, what it's able to give us uh, for a short period of time and then uh, see the overcurrent protection kick in. We want to look at these two figures right here. Right now the inverter is just pulling about 44 watts. So let's kick this on. As you can see we're pulling 138 amps, 1700 watts. So that's quite a bit and there we go, it just shut off. Now this has an automatic restart feature. We should uh, see kick in here pretty quick. Here goes. This battery is really doing a good job. In this Vader 100 amp hour 12 volt battery power, follow the cord, a full size gaming PC workstation. So if we look underneath the desk here, right there is the outlet. Nothing's plugged into that. Uh, we've got uh, all of the computer stuff plugged into this UPS right here. Uh, which I made a video about uh, recently. Go check it out. It's a pretty sweet unit. The yellow cord's coming and uh, powering the UPS, which in turn is just passing the power through to that PC. We've got three 4K monitors, and this is a gaming benchmark, so we're pushing the graphics really hard right now. And uh, so if we look here on the app, you can see right there, uh, it's a little hard to see, but anyway, 670, 660, watts of current. So if you were pushing a computer really hard like this, uh, you could get a solid two hours of runtime on one of those batteries, and of course even longer uh, if you weren't pushing it uh, really hard. Can this Vader battery power a microwave? And yes, the microwave is here in my garage. And based on the other high load tests, I'm guessing this will easily start this microwave and then it will cut itself out on overcurrent protection because this microwave pulls a lot of power. I've got the app here so we can see. Here we go, three, two, one. 1300 watts, 1900 watts, 155 amps, 156 amps. And there it goes. It was able to run it just fine. Then it uh, triggers the overcurrent protection uh, after a couple of seconds of that high amp draw, which is very good to see. In this 12 volt 100 amp hour meter battery power, follow the yellow cord, full size gas furnace. What we're using to input this uh, power today is this easy generator switch. Highly recommend anyone who uses a gas furnace have one of these. It makes powering your furnace during a grid down situation incredibly easy. Have ignition. Lower is up to speed now, and uh, if we take a look at the app, 
Uh, you can see that we're pulling uh, just over 500 watts. That includes the overhead of the inverter. It's estimating this would run for just about two and a half hours at a 93% state of charge. And that's assuming that this furnace is running that entire time. If it's cycling off and on, obviously your runtime would be longer. So yeah, this elevator battery can easily run a full-size gas furnace. That spreadsheet where I compare all of the batteries that I've tested thus far and uh, grade them. I think a lot of you will find that uh, very helpful. I put a lot of effort and time into these videos, if you can't tell. And uh, the only compensation I ask uh, from all of you is to be sure and give